One of the most common things I see come up in the Beam 3SG community is how to set up an oil catch can properly for this engine. And if you don't know what an oil catch can is or what its purpose is, essentially your engine has a system called a positive crankcase ventilation system, which is meant to capture crankcase gases and oil vapor and pump them back into the intake to be burned instead of them being vented to the atmosphere. Mainly it's an emissions thing. There's some other theories about performance with it, but I'm not going to get into that. The problem with the PCV system is that by siphoning these crankcase gases and oil vapor back into the intake, you actually sludge up your valves, you coat your intake with oil, and it just really isn't a good thing for performance. So what a lot of people try and do is they use an oil catch can or an air oil separator to try and capture those that oil vapor so it doesn't cause you problems. So then the question is like, oh, well, just how do I hook it up? Oil catch cans aren't a new thing, but the PCV system on the Beam 3 SGE is a little more complicated than a lot of older systems, especially if you're an A86 person coming from a 4A GE. This system is quite a bit more complicated. There's more parts to it, but don't worry. I'm gonna tell you all about it. I think it's important to understand how the stock system works to be able to hook up an oil catch can properly. And if you don't want to learn about how it works, that's totally fine. Skip right ahead to one of the chapters down below just to the install based on how you have your car set up. So I'm gonna go through how the system works. Then I'm gonna describe a couple of different ways you can hook it up based on stock intake, um, stock ECU, and then ITVs. So essentially the different ways that you'll set this up is a single catch can recirculated, a dual catch can recirculated, or a single or dual uh, catch can vented to atmosphere. So. Four different ways, but the vent of the atmosphere are really like one topic, so I'll talk about those together. Let's go over the system on the car. My engine is far from stock, but to access the PCV system, we're gonna go ahead and pull the beauty cover here, which I've made very easy by just, it's just held on by the uh, oil cap. To make this easier to understand, I'm gonna pull these hoses out and around so you can just see it, everything a bit more clearly. This valve cover has two different breathers on it. We've got your PCV valve on this side. That's this blue guy here. Now, if you're looking at this going, mine doesn't look this way, that's totally okay. This is a PCV valve from, I think a 2JZ. It's just got a 90 degree angle on it to make it easier to route it. And then this is the fitting. It's usually cocked a little bit sideways. You can actually just jam a screwdriver in here and rotate it. It's almost like the valve cover was meant to have it run this way because it's got these little divots on it. But anyway, the way that the PCV system works is that under high vacuum or medium vacuum situations, like at cruise or at idle, this PCV valve is hooked up to the intake manifold, which would normally be here, okay? This goes straight to the intake manifold. So there's vacuum being pulled on this, okay? This, this vent over on this side has some baffling, but it doesn't have anything to restrict flow if it's pulled a vacuum here. Essentially what's going on is that at idle, at cruise, we're pulling the vacuum, so we're siphoning off some of those crankcase gases and those oil vapors. As we're siphoning it off, we have to replace that air with something, and that's gonna come from your fresh air vent. So the stock setup, this blue PCV valve is hooked to the intake manifold, and this hose comes out here to the stock intake after the mass airflow sensor. Because as we're pulling a vacuum on this, we're pulling air in here, and if we leave it open, it's just a massive vacuum leak. It's the same as if we're gonna leave that port open on the intake manifold. So by putting it to the mass airflow sensor, it is now a metered air source to the intake, to the engine. This is important to know because a lot of people will just disconnect that or they'll put like an air filter on it, like a little breather filter, and it just ends up being this massive vacuum leak because their car never runs 100% on like a stock ECU because they leave that open to the atmosphere. So really how you should set that up is PCV to the intake manifold and the fresh air vent back to the intake after the mass airflow sensor and before the throttle body, okay? Now that we've talked about that, let's show how to hook this up or how you should ideally hook this up with a stock ECU setup and a stock manifold setup. And that's going to be the recirculated catch can for a stock ECU setup oil catch can, you should route your PCV valve, this is gonna be your primary uh, source to catch oil, to an oil catch can like this. This is the JSP Fab um, all-in-one unit. I have it set up as a breather, so normally this would not be a breather, this would actually recirculate back to your intake. So you would take this, 
go to your catch can right here. You'll block off the other port and then out of the top, you will send that back to the intake manifold and you're good to go. However, that does leave the situation where under high crankcase pressure, say wide open throttle, where you're gonna have a lot more pressure built up in the crankcase, a lot more air being pushed out, it will actually come out both of these, right? You'll get pressure coming out of both. And so sure, you'll be able to catch all of the oil vapor from the PCV valve, but from your fresh air vent, it's gonna dump that into the intake right into the throttle body. So the like most perfect situation if you're going to use a stock ECU is two catch cans that are recirculated to the intake. So you go PCV to catch can, back to intake manifold, and then you'll have a separate oil catch can that'll go fresh air vent, catch can, and then back to the intake really right here before the throttle body after the mass airflow sensor. So that's how you set up for the stock intake and a stock ECU. So now let's talk about uh, ITBs as well as standalone ECUs that use a, a MAP sensor, a manifold absolute pressure sensor. The whole point of that dual catch can recirculated is that you're not inducing any vacuum leaks accidentally. But when you go to ITBs or a MAP sensor, you don't have to worry about vacuum leaks because the MAP sensor is able to calculate how much air is flowing into the intake based on pressures and neat things like that. So you can run vented setups that don't cause issues with vacuum leaks and fuel trims and all of that. So for this, for the, the aftermarket ECU with a MAP sensor with ITBs, we're gonna run two lines from our fresh air vent and from our PCV. So we'll go fresh air vent and then we'll go PCV. And I'm gonna run both of these to the same catch can. So I've got this one so I'm gonna plumb it all terrible so you can see it, but that'll go in one port. And then we've got the other one. This will go in the other port, bloop. And that's how simple it is. We'll have both of them going to the same catch can. It's a baffled catch can, so that way it's gonna try and trap and capture all the oil vapors. So then at the top, we'll just have, you know, the air that we're displacing coming right out there. I don't like to tie these both together. I, I feel like it's better to have both of them breathing. So that way you don't have any f conflicting airflow or anything like that. So I tend to run them separately to the catch can and then they can run to the same container there. The other option you can do is, well, you could say like, take this guy, your fresh air vent and have that run to another second catch can. So that way you've got say more capacity or whatever to be able to capture your oil from your crankcase vents. I will say that I think there is something to be said about running a recirculated setup. I prefer to recirculate because I think that pulling a little bit of a vacuum on the rings actually helps everything seal better, run better and make a little bit more power. I don't have any data to back that up, but I typically like to do that. With ITBs, you just don't have that ability. So you'll just run both of these to your catch cans or catch can, that'd be good. If you're wondering what size fittings and hoses and all that stuff you need to be able to get this to run properly, uh, the 2JZ PCV valve that has that 90 on it, I think Battle Garage sells them. The one I got has a 3 8 so it's 3 8 from that PCV valve to the catch can. And then the fresh air vent, uh, I thought it was a 5 8 that's a little bit too big, half inch is a little too small, so I'd probably err on the side of caution and go with a half inch, or just be, be prepared to use a, a 5 8 with a hose clamp to make it seal better, but that all works. So my hose I have there is actually a 5 8 and a 3 8 Let's go ahead and route our hoses and uh, get this guy all tidied up here. So there you go, there's everything you 
probably need to know about an oil catch can on a Beams 3S GE, uh, how to hook it up and all that stuff. I should say that the dual vented can also will work for the stock ECU, like the recirculated will. Uh, I just think that recirculated is better. I don't know. This was the last part I needed to be able to take this car, car to get it tuned. So now it's just uh, some idle control stuff and getting it tuned and I can finally drive this dang car. If you're new to my channel, this is my Project Cream Puff A86 hatchback resto mod. I've been working on this car for about five years at this point. Well, maybe about four and a half. And it's finally together and about ready to uh, hit the streets. If you've got other beam swap questions, put them in the comments. If you've got other beams things, let me know. Uh, maybe I'll make a video out of it or maybe I'll just answer your, your comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.